Hello everyone, it's Kevin Annett speaking to you under the glorious flag of our Republic of Canada and it's September 20th. I'm going to read to you today something I wrote as a pre-election reflection. It's entitled, Leaving the Playpen, What Limpy Lauer Taught Me About Canada. Well, a reporter asked me today why, as a proponent of a republic, I am running from rather than for Canadian public office. I told him the following story. Her name was Julie Selman. One soggy Vancouver afternoon after our grade 9 math class, she approached me and asked me if I'd give her upcoming nomination speech. It seems she had decided to run for our student council president. You're good with words, she explained. Well, far be it for me, whether age 15 or 63, to shy away from a microphone. Nevertheless, I hesitated before her entreaty, which wasn't surprising, considering what I thought of our high school student council and the daughter and vice principal, Mr. Lauer, who held sway over it. But then I surprised myself, and perhaps Julie as well, by saying yes. After all, I realized I'd get to address the entire student body. Well, the breathtaking day arrived. Over 300 of my fellow students crammed the school auditorium with the usual contrived electioneering euphoria, sporting placards and chanting the names of their chosen candidates for the esteemed playpen office. Julie and I were seated with two other candidates and their minions up on the stage where the previous year I had flubbed my lines in our pitiable production of As You Like It. But those had been someone else's words. The script I would recite today was my own. I bore a definite smirk when my time came and I strode up to the podium. The young crowd in their ever-present clutch of supervising teachers sensed that something was afoot. The vice principal, old Limpy Lauer, was frowning from the back of the hall even before I spoke. My words were brief and struck right at the heart of the matter. I was asked to speak today on behalf of Julie Selman and tell you why she'd make a good student council president, I began, making a point of putting aside my prepared notes. Well, Julie's a great person. If we actually had an honest system of student government in the school, there'd be no better person to head it up. But the point is, we don't. Our student council was run by Mr. Lauer, who can veto any of the things we decide. It's really just a puppet body. So it doesn't matter who we elect today, they'll all be controlled by the school administration. Is that what we call democracy? Well, at that point, suddenly my microphone was turned off. Limpy Lauer was doing his best to hobble his way towards the stage, accompanied by the reigning student council president, an insipid nebbish named Dave Pearson. Limpy ordered me to the school office. Dave seized the mic, and that was that. The rumor was that Limpy Lauer had won his handicap and his nickname from a German bullet at the Battle of the Somme. Apparently, he was something of a Canadian historian. The approved kind, naturally. And as both scholar and former grunt, the guy berated me for about an hour as if I was a Hun prisoner of war in need of enlightenment on the virtues of what he kept calling representative democracy. How do you mean, like, you represent all of us? I asked him. That just pissed him off even more. Well, I wasn't expelled for my speech that day, although my parents were issued a stern letter from the school administration concerning their son's irresponsible antics. My dad laughed it off and even congratulated me, while Mum gave her own version of a limpy lower speech. Regardless, I was suddenly on a definite probation at University Hill Secondary School. As I would experience so often over subsequent decades, I became someone to be watched and avoided. Even my old friends began keeping their distance from me, and teachers frowned at me whenever I passed by in the halls. Well, all the world's a friggin' stage, Kev, I said to myself, and so I proceeded to move on to Act 2. I issued a leaflet. Well, the days that followed were a lot like the time that a bunch of wild Indians and I started peacefully occupying genocidal churches on Sunday mornings. In the words of one of my fellow occupiers, quote, like we're standing on a pile of dynamite holding a match. A tense, horrified excitement hung over our school after the 50 copies of my epistle made the rounds. And small wonder. It read in part, This school system tells us we're to become mature and responsible citizens of a democracy, but they deny us freedom every day. How can we practice democracy when we're 19 if we're denied it at 18? Mr. Lauer has no place on our student council. We need a student-run body. Until we get that, we should all boycott student council elections and refuse to pay student council fees. I didn't sign my manifesto, but hell, everybody knew who'd written it. 
And being so bold, I began to gain new support. Kids started asking me for copies of the leaflet. Somebody graffitied the walls of the school with Power to the People slogans. I soon issued other leaflets, a whole series of them under the provocative title of Inside the Factory. The leaflets called on the students and teachers to convene a weekly assembly to make all the school decisions. In short, I was calling for revolution and the powers that were knew it. Well, the upshot of this, my first sojourn into politics, was quite unexpected. The school administration actually buckled. The following year, the student council won its independence and a student assembly was formed at which anyone could speak and vote. Old Limpy Lauer was retired and a crop of more progressive teachers brought in. The curriculum became freer and more student directed. And soon, I was asked to sit on a new consultative committee to help run the school. For as United States President Lyndon Johnson once advised all rulers desiring to co-op dissent, better to have him inside the tent pissing out than outside the tent pissing in. Well, nothing much changes, especially in Canada, where the playpen prevails. Limpy Lauer still sits at the head of the arrangement called the government in the person of the Governor General, the unelected representative of a foreign power who can veto and disband any government and pass any order in council law without our knowledge or consent. And like dutiful subordinate student council members, Canadian members of Parliament must all swear true allegiance to one person, a foreigner calling herself a queen, rather than to a constitution or to we the people. Well, coming of age is always a painful process, especially when you're the first one to declare that the emperor truly is naked. But nearly half a century after I helped overturn University Hill Secondary School, I've learned once more that a limping, corrupt, and obsolete system can be brought down much more easily than we realize. And over half of Canadians agree with me when it comes to creating a republic in Canada. So learn the hard-won lessons, boys and girls. Don't pay those student council fees called federal taxes or voting the elections to their hand puppet parliament. Walk away from their system and make something new, free, and real that you yourselves control. And then watch what happens. Watch as the old oppressors will have to limp right along after you to catch up. Run for office? In this country? Hell, I could carve a better political system out of a banana. And shall. This is Kevin Ann at Eagle Strong Voice. Republic of Canada at gmail.com. Stay tuned.